on this week's World of Saltwater Fishing, we're off Key Largo in the fabulous Florida Keys. I'm with Captain Kevin Jeffries, and we'll be offshore trolling for dolphin. Good way to start the dinner off, huh? <laughs> yeah, got a dinner, nice start. Deep side and flow too, huh? Did he crunch that thing or did he crunch it? Piled on it. And then we're gonna change things up a bit and come back inshore and get behind the value net boats to catch muttons and zero mackerel. And a little mutton snapper to go with your dolphin, perhaps? Yeah, a little snapper for dinner. Don't miss this exciting episode. George Pofalomo's World of Saltwater Fishing. Big fish don't stand a chance. October is a transitional time throughout South Florida and the entire Florida Keys. And on this trip to Key Largo, I had the Mark 6, the Mako 334 center console, and we docked back at Sundowners. And on this particular trip, I was back with good friend Captain Kevin Jeffries, who is a noted reef and offshore Key Largo guide. Yeah, so, uh, you know, the fall, the early fall like this, October is, uh, is, is kind of a transition time of year for our fishing. You, uh, in my opinion, if you're lucky, you get the conditions that are, that are proper to give you an opportunity to go offshore uh, and go dolphin fishing. The winds were not bad at all. They're around maybe 10 to 12 knots. It's just the perfect opportunity for us to go out and try to catch some dolphin. Yeah, we started running up from sundowners, come out under the bridge and, and uh, worked our way offshore into deeper water. As we're running offshore, and I'm watching the radar in the bird mode, uh, birds were really scarce. There was actually a, a nice rip in shallow at about 120 feet, but uh, felt like it probably wasn't deep enough for what we were looking for. Uh, just kept working our way out until we got to, uh, like I say, around 600 feet, 650 feet, I think, if I, if I remember right, and found the you know, textbook weed line, nice and clean on both sides for miles and uh, so it made it a pretty obvious opportunity to, to troll the uh, troll the values. That weed line was just, you knew something had to be in it, did you? It didn't take too long, we had, had a bite a little earlier, came up short. Now the question is, do we have any followers with him? So for so we got all that spin tackle here, he's coming behind the boat. All right, I'll trade places with you if you want. I'll yep. try to bring them alongside the boat. Beautiful fall dolphin here, huh? Yeah, pretty, pretty fish. <laughs> Good way to start the dinner off, huh? <laughs> yeah, got a dinner, nice start. Okay. Yeah, pretty fish, pretty fish. Thank you, George. Might see some, like the flying fish out here. Yeah. I took this little Williamson, just a tiny skirt, put it in front, match it up like a flying fish to a small valley on that one. Ready for the fish box opening below you, I'll know, drop him in. He's not too happy, you know. I right, come in there. And there it is. Nice fish, George. Yeah, good, good job, good start. Kevin. And, uh, well, here we are, we're in the fall. We're in 650, 670, yep. working a beautiful weed line. Generally early on in the spring, dolphin are in fairly close like that. Some rain tend to move farther off. What do you see happening it more in the fall? That yeah, one. Yeah, I mean, there, go. there we go. Go. <laughs> <laughs> there he is. Let me know what you have. Definitely saw a flash of green, so I can assume it's a mahi. Just as we got George's fish in the boat, the flat line bent over and and I uh, jumped on that rod and we got a we got a second nice again, eight, ten pound class. Uh, juvenile mahi. Yeah, George got him. Not a real cooperative one, was he? I thought I was trying to make it easy on you, keep the boat going, keep him swimming with us. Yeah, yeah. Fish. definitely other ideas. Well, at least this thing was hooked good. Hook out. Got that one out. Ready to All right, next contribution to the fish box. Yeah, coming up. Going in. Got dinner. We do. Okay. Now, another round of baits. We'll re-figure this to our track plotter and the Simran. We'll get back on that weed line and they're here. Yeah. No question. George Poveromo's World of Saltwater Fishing, proudly brought to you by Mako. You'll find them where the fish are. Bass Pro Shops, your adventure starts here. Mercury Marine, the official outboard of George Poveromo's World of Saltwater Fishing. 
Simrad and the new NSS Evo 3 display. Go with Simrad and go with confidence. A solid weed line off Key Largo in the Florida Keys is keeping Kevin Jeffries and me busy at Catching Dolphin. We're on the troll, working this weed line, just looking at it. Then the middle flat line goes down, the one that had that Raplub Magnum 40 on it. So up comes a dolphin and it leaps. A dolphin nailed that thing down there and, and you knew it would, it was just a matter of time. This thing nailed the uh, swimming plug. And we had uh, you know, a lot of success on the uh, Rig Ballyhoo, both with skirts and some naked. And our first uh, fish that we didn't catch on those was on the uh, was on the Rapala um, X Rap Magnum 40. And then you had something. What happened? You, that one missed, and then yeah, this one got that two one. misses. That one uh, hooked up briefly on the uh, left rigger. Yep. And then one hooked up briefly on the right rigger. But I'm guessing they're just uh, fish that are just right about the size. They're just not maybe quite big enough to eat those whole ballyhoos. All right, let's see. This one was big enough to get that swimming plug, that raffle up. That's the Max 40, the deep runner. Oh, here he is. Have a look at this fish. And a uh, nice, uh, nice female that, uh, that had been beat up. She'd been through a war or something, possibly, maybe with a blue marlin or, or something of that, of that class. Uh. And he nailed that plug. So yeah. we fight the fish. We bring it up to the gaff and another one's gonna go in the fish box and uh, come home for dinner. And you could see where a lot of the scarring had healed over, but at one point in its life, uh, it had an encounter with a blue marlin and uh, somehow got away from that one. But uh, it was the uh, Rapala x rap Magnum 40 that ultimately did that fish in. All right, here he is right on the top. He's coming at you, buddy. There he comes, my hero. <laughs> this thing blasted that Rapala Mag 40 deep diver. You see that thing scream? Yeah, he come up jumping. He didn't like the taste of it. That once he got it in his mouth, did he, George? That heavy fish. Look at him on yeah, the top, nice right fish. under the surface there. Real nice fish. Okay. I'll, I'll give you a shot. I'll step back once I get to the leader. Got him. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Deep diving plug too, huh? That's crazy. Yeah. Well, here we are. We're sitting here about two in the afternoon. Things are quieting down on the surface. Midday blues. So they ask you, so, well, what do you do? You try to get at least one bait deep. This thing was down there, meant to run 40 feet. Did he crunch that thing or did he crunch it? Piled on it. Piled on it, came up jumping right away. That is so awesome. Pretty fish. It's like the saltwater version of catching largemouth bass when you're getting dolphin on weed lines, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Pull them out of the weeds. The rhythm on this weed line was that it was a pick of dolphin. Better? meaning that you troll a ways and boom, you get a single fish with no followers. I think that's mostly time of year. Our, our October fishing is like that sometimes. We're not into small schoolies, we're into a little bit bigger fish, you know, commonly eight, 10, 12 pound uh -huh. stuff. Free line and nice. They're not a live bait, aren't nice you? Nice medium sized pilchard here. Yeah. See my dolphin back there, about 15 pounds of seaweed over its head. So not only get a dolphin dinner, but you get salad to go along with it. Yeah. Not something I commonly do, but uh, George had a had a kit for tagging some some dolphins. I had these tags from the Dolphin Fish Tagging Research Program. They ask anglers to tag dolphin and send in the reports, and this enables fisheries biologists to keep tabs and learn more about not only the growth rates of dolphin fish, but also the migratory patterns, which is very very important. They've learned so many things about dolphin fish in general. In one year, you could get a four or five pound school fish could grow 30, 35 pounds in one year if they have an abundant amount of forage. They're one of the fastest growing fish around uh, that can live three to four years and um, get quite large. What's that hook getting you? Heck, I'm gonna tag him. I got the net. Right there. All right, very nice. Fish here. Get him out. One tag dolphin, beautiful colors on this fish. Going back in. We're going to see where this fish ends up, aren't we? Uh, and off he goes. Nice, healthy release, too. <laughs> no, never bled at all. No. Both those fish that we uh, tagged, they, uh, they left here real healthy. That's nice. The Caribbean Club, it seems like maybe uh, a lot of people 
overlook it. They've got a beautiful ramp that you could launch a large boat there. I use it uh, almost exclusively every time I'm in Key Largo. It appeared in uh, movies before, most notably Humphrey Bogart in Key Largo. So from a historical perspective and a boat ramp perspective, the Caribbean Club, without a doubt, I'll be back. Wild Bird Sanctuary in Key Largo is one of those places if you have a free hour or so that uh, you want to go experience with the family or, or take the kids to. It's a very commendable exhibit in that it helps a lot of injured birds that ordinarily would not survive out in the wild. They nurse them back to health. Some of them can't be turned free in the wild without something bad happening to them. So they find a new home here. They have a, quite a collection of different kind of birds, naturally all kinds of water birds, owls. It's just a pretty cool thing to walk in and see these birds. And by coming in and participating in the exhibit, you're actually helping them tend to future birds that could be hurt, uh, that need a home. It, it's just a very worthy place as well as a very interesting place. So keep the Wild Bird Sanctuary of Key Largo on your must-do list. George Pulveromo's World of Saltwater Fishing, proudly brought to you by Penn, let the battle begin. Rapala, your best shot at a world record. Float On, the original aluminum immersible boat trailer. ACR, the leader in marine safety electronics. We'll be right back. We're gonna shape up to be a lucky dolphin, we're gonna tag him. Kevin Jeffries and I are off Key Largo in the Florida Keys. It's hard to leave a weed line, it's yielding a solid pick at dolphin. So we kept uh, tagging these fish and we tagged several of them on this particular day and hoped that uh, science could even learn more about dolphin fish, which in turn, that knowledge would pass down to anglers like us so we could really, really learn more about these fish and actually how to catch them. Got them. All right, now, Let's aim if we could in the gunnels. Net it like that. Like I'll leave them in the net. We'll tag them that way. All right. And they put I'll hold, I'll hold the net. All right, you hold the net. I'll, I'll get the tag on. Yeah, right, right here. I think we're close. Okay. I tag them right here, and the top of the dorsal, and one other thing here. Oh. Okay, let me get them out of here. Right. I think he's loose. Let's yep, he is. Make sure. Yep. And just slide that out. There you go. He's loose. And there's the tag in this fish. This is one lucky dolphin. And he gives me a kick and he goes away with a tag in it. The bite started to slow down a little. Uh, we got into that, you know, afternoon doldrums, we call it. And uh... we did well on dolphin. I mean, after all, we had enough fish to eat. And also, uh, we tagged quite a few dolphin. Yeah, and then uh, I actually got a, a text that said uh, some of the guys that run these commercial ballyhoo boats were, were still pulling pulling the nets in. You know, why don't we circle back and come in and get behind some of these value boats? So I, uh, I talked George into running in there and having a look at those. Sometimes catch some big muttons and uh, uh, a lot of sharks and stuff like that around them as they purse that net up. So we made the run inshore. Ballyhoo is an incredibly important fish from the standpoint of trolling baits. And the Florida Keys has just an overabundant supply of them and they have a certain amount of net boats that are allowed to come in through permitting to net ballyhoo. You know, as they pull this, this commercial ballyhoo net, it starts out at about 4,500 foot circle, so it's, it's a giant circle. And I want to be, you know, up front on this style of fishing. These guys are out there earning their living. Do not infringe on what they're doing. Do not come up there and just bird dog them behind their transom or anything like that at all. It's imperative that, uh, that you stay out of their way for sure. Keep a respectable distance. You don't necessarily have to be right on the backside of their net as they're pulling it in. You could be a safe distance back down current of where that net is being pulled and actually drift your baits a safe distance to where you're not interfering with what they're doing and you will still catch fish. It's a respect, respect kind of a deal. And if you happen to get friendly enough with one of the captains and he calls you in and wants to give you some live value or whatever, more power to you. But the Ballyhoo boat fishing is certainly another unique angle, only in the Keys. I can see, here he comes. Mutton time. Hang on, it's coming nice and easy here. There you go. And a little mutton snapper to go with your dolphin, perhaps? Yeah, a little snapper for dinner. 
<laughs> Pretty fish. And notice you were just uh, dead stick in the bow, you let it out of weight and you put the rod in the holder like I have back there. Yep. And you got both the lucky shot on that. Yeah, both drifting and just slowly dragging that ballyhoo across the bottom. And got a real nice bite there. It was pretty, about as easy as it gets, wasn't it, George? You come up and ate it. I I'm watching the rod, and, it, and yeah. for a minute I'm thinking maybe you hung bottom, and the rod started going deeper, deeper, and lines start to move, and I said, time, you're on. And on the Simrad screen, you could see the marks of the fish that were laying back behind the net boats. But through this whole experience, not only do you see fish that were on that Simrad screen, but you would see the cereal mackerel start chasing a lot of our baits up. They're a little bit on the shy side, but just a unique experience. There you go. There you go, George. I was reeling it in, he exploded on the top, and at first I thought it was a barracuda, and then I looked. You saw the color. I saw the color. He came yeah. right up on top and he blasted it. Ooh, he doesn't like ooh, that. That might be a good one, George. They're all good. They're all good. Come ones. on, Kevin. Yeah, Don't you know that? that? We wouldn't be down here if they weren't good. I got myself Big a map. Yes, I do. Big zero. Told you I saw green. Is he left them or you only get him? <laughs> Go for it. Big zero. <laughs> I'm going to get him out of here, too. God, whoop, he came right, right out. Perfect. Hang on, I'm going to bring him out and take a look at that fish. None too soon, that, that, that fluorocarbon was frayed. Yeah. Take a look at this fish. Nice, nice zero. <sighs> Better, better bait up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's a fat zero. I'll keep him. Don't let him go. Oh, I'm not gonna. <laughs> okay. I was just checking. You got nervous with him. You thought I was gonna let him go, huh? I was like, dude, don't let him go. Those are delicious. George's Tackle Locker, brought to you by King Sailfish, the pioneer of catch and release mounts. Visit kingsailfish.com. Tired of fighting with salt water to protect the integrity of the snaps and zippers on your enclosures or cushions? Help is on the way. Starbright's new Snap and Zipper Lubricant is formulated using the company's exclusive PTEF polymers. It won't wash off and it doesn't stain. Merely spread the lubrication along a zipper seam, be it metal or plastic, and let it go to work preventing corrosion and salt crust. Aside from protecting snaps and zippers, it thoroughly lubricates and keeps them performing with minimal friction in all temperatures and conditions. It's also perfect for soft-sided tackle bags, foul weather gear, and even boat covers. Starbright is the leader in quality boat care products. Mercury Performance Stats Key Largo. Seas, three feet. Power, triple 350 horsepower Mercury Verado outboards. Total miles traveled, 68. Speed, 39 miles per hour. Total fuel burned, 52 gallons. We'll be right back. George Poveromo's World of Saltwater Fishing, proudly brought to you by Starbright, professional grade boat care products. Papa's Pilar Artesian Crafted Rum, never a spectator. The Florida Keys and Key West, come as you are. King Sailfish, the pioneer of catch and release mounts. Visit kingsailfish.com. A very pleasant surprise on this trip to Key Largo in the northern Florida Keys was the Island Bay Resort. It's on the bay side, uh, overlooking Florida Bay, they have several cottages here, just well manicured grounds, and the sunsets right off their own private beach is just nothing short of remarkable. As far as the rooms, they have several different sizes of rooms from uh, one room efficiencies, they have two bedroom cottages, uh, they have suites, and just the bright, happy colors in here, very comfortable units. And when I'm coming back into Key Largo, I will certainly come back here and anyone who's planning a vacation or a break or whatever to Key Largo, make sure you look this place up online. You definitely want to stay here. I guarantee you, you're going to fall in love with it and you'll be back. As the Ballyhoo boat got, got the net pursed up tight and they were almost finished, uh, you know, they're, they're set, they call it. You know, George had a little, I'm going to call it a mini knocker rig, real light, light lead, uh, same five or six O circle hook and uh, he had pretty good success with it there briefly. We, he got into a really nice mangrove snapper, uh, again on a, on, a, on a whole ballyhoo. Kevin let his bait out. I'm free line in mine. He puts his rod in the holder and he was doing something else. I think he was gonna go rig up um, a wire trace leader for some of the zeros that we were seeing there. I look over and see his rod bend. Kevin, Kevin, wind tight. 
you're on. He winds tight and he's hooked up solidly. You all right? Yep, uh, I'm in neutral. Nice mutton. Coming out here, Kevin. Wasn't long after, here comes the mutton snapper aboard the Mark VI. And Kevin Jeffries uh, said they'd be there, and he was right. There nice is. one. Good one. So it was very interesting and productive day off Key Largo in the Florida Keys with Captain Kevin Jeffries. Yeah, excellent, uh, excellent opportunity to get out, uh, get out with George again. I've been fortunate, I guess, that the, the fish have been cooperative every time. We come back into sundowners, wash down the boat, make sure everything was nice and clean. Then it was time to get the boat on the trailer. And the good thing about the Caribbean Club, right around the corner from sundowners, put the Mark VI on the trailer, got it all secured down. And the beauty of Key Largo, I had a very short tow home to Northern Broward County. And uh, that's what you gotta love. And that's what a lot of people love about fishing in the upper Florida Keys, Key Largo in particular. Stay in touch with George. Visit georgepoforomo.com. On Facebook, facebook.com forward slash george.poforomo. On Instagram, at georgepoforomo. YouTube, georgepoforomo.tv. And on mobile devices, waypoint.tv.